Hey everyone, this is Chad with Welcome to WordPress, and today I'm going to be going over how you can change the background image and or color of whatever theme you're using for your blog. I'm going to demonstrate this on the just default WordPress theme that comes with every WordPress installation. This process is going to be pretty similar from one theme to the next, so this is as good a place as, good a place as any to demonstrate it. First thing you want to do is uh, pull up a copy of your theme's style sheet. You can do that by either downloading it from your server and using a text editor like I'm going to do, or you can just do it right in your um, WordPress dashboard. Just go under the Appearance tab, there's a link that says Editor, and that will give you access to all the um, files for your theme. Whatever, whichever you do, make sure you have a backup. Don't mess around with your, your code or your style sheets or anything unless you have a backup of the original copy, because you don't want to break anything. Trust me, not a good time. So, first thing we're going to do, like I said, is pull up our style sheet. I have a copy here on my computer, and I'm using my, uh, my text editor. And the tag you want to look for is the body tag that controls the background for the entire page. You can see here that on the default theme, they've specified both a background color and a background image. The reason, the reason you want to do that is if your image is not available or if somebody comes to the edge of your image by scrolling or if they just have, let's say, a really big monitor. So if it's just a single image that isn't repeating and they can see the edge of the image, you want that background color to take over. That way you can choose a color that blends well with the image so there won't be any ugly lines or break up in your, your layout or anything like that. So what we're going to do first is basically just remove this style information so you can see what the page would look like if it wasn't there. And it's just going to go to the, the browser default of a white background. Save that. I'm going to pull it up real quick. And there we go. We have a white background. On the default theme, you do have a gray bar right here, and that's why I wanted to show this to you. It's a good idea before you mess with your background to go in and just remove whatever background styles are in place because then you'll be able to see what else you're contending with. This gray bar is actually a part of the background image itself. It's put there to make sure things blend nicely. So whatever background we end up ultimately using, you're still going to be able to see this gray bar unless we took the time to go in and edit it out of this image, which we're not going to do as part of this tutorial. So save yourself some headaches. Take a look at what your site looks like with no background before you start trying to put in something new. So now that we've done that, we're going to go ahead and apply our own background color. For the purpose of this tutorial, we're just going to pretend that gray bar isn't there. So what you want to do for background color is just type in the hex code for the color you want to use. Hex codes are just six-digit numbers that signify a color to a web browser. If you aren't familiar with them or you don't know the code for the color you want to use, just do a Google search for hex codes and you'll find countless websites that give you countless codes to countless colors. The uh, sky is really the limit. So once you type in your hex code, you can save your style sheet, pull up your blog, hit refresh. This is going to be a nice dark green. There we go. So now we have our dark green color. You can change that to be any color you want. The other option you can do, or you can do both like we're going to do here, is you can add a background image. So we're going to go into our style sheet. And um, to, do, to add a background image, you basically need to supply the style sheet with the URL to the image. You can do that two ways. You can put just a, an absolute URL, like this one up here. This isn't to an image, but it's just a URL to a specific location on the web. You can do that with your image if you want. Just go in, upload it to anywhere you, anywhere you choose. You can go into your media library in WordPress, upload it there, and uh, just grab that URL, and you can use that in this next step. Or you can use what I'm going to do is a, a relative URL. If you aren't familiar with relative URLs, just kind of ignore this part. You can just use the absolute URL, like I said, just upload an image, grab the URL, and use it here. But a relative URL is basically pointing to an image or a file on the web in relation to where you currently are. Now what that means is right now we're on the style sheet in the folder for this particular theme. Also inside that theme is a folder called images. Let me show you. This is the uh, folder for the default theme. You can see right here there's a folder called images. Now there's a style sheet that we're looking at over here. So from this location where the style sheet's sitting, we want to go into the images folder and look at a file in this folder. In order to do that, I need to put that file in here. So I'm going to go ahead and copy my new background image into this folder. So now in the images folder, we have my new background image. In order to create the relative URL we need, I'm going to add to the background line. I'm going to type URL so it knows it needs to grab a URL, and open parentheses and a single quotation mark, and I'm going to type the relative URL. So in this case, from where the style sheet's sitting, we want to go into the images folder. From the images folder, we want to type in the file name, and that is newback.png. I'm going to close our quotes and close our parentheses. 
I'm going to go ahead and save our page. And then we can refresh our blog. And there we have our background pattern. Now you can see that that simple, you know, 16 by 16 pixel or whatever it was image is now creating this, you know, full page repeating stripe pattern. It's doing that because the default setting for a background image is to tile it, repeat it to the repeat it across and repeat it down as well. We can disable that very easily by going back into the style sheet and telling it not to repeat. Maybe by adding after that parentheses no dash repeat. Go back in and refresh. And now you can see it only displays the image once. The other options for repeating, I'm going to show you these and I'll tell you why they're so useful, is you can tell it to repeat one way but not the other. If you want it just to repeat horizontally, say repeat X, telling it to repeat on the X axis and it will repeat across the page, but it will not repeat vertically. You can do the same thing for repeat Y and it will go straight down. The reason that repeat X and repeat Y come in handy is you could create an image, let's say you wanted to have a gradient or a pattern that was just, you know, horizontal stripes. You could create an image that was maybe, you know, five pixels long or even just one pixel long, I'm sorry, wide, five or even one pixel wide that would display along the side here. And if it was just a gradient from like red to blue or whatever you wanted to have, you could just have a very thin image which makes it a smaller file size and then just tell the, the browser through the style sheet to repeat it across. So you don't need to have an image that's, you know, 2,000 pixels wide to make sure it'll cover the biggest monitor out there. You can use a simple enough pattern that can be repeated. You can repeat it in whatever direction you want. In addition to the repeating, there's also the position to consider. Now the default position, if I take the, this out here, no repeat. The default position is going to be top left, as we see here. When I didn't supply a position for the style sheet, it just puts it in the top left corner of the browser window. If I want to move that around, I can do it a few different ways. I can give it some predetermined values, like we still want on the top, so we'll type top, and then we'll put center, because we want it to be centered on the screen. Save that, refresh, and you can see now it pops it into the middle of the page. Now with this image, that's not very useful, but on different images, like let's say you wanted to put a really cool beach scene in the background. There we go. This is actually a better example. I just paused the video really quick because I wanted to just pop a new image into the folder and change the URL. I'll show you the style sheet real quick here. All I did was uh, put a new image in the folder with, it was called beach.jpg. Um, still using our hex code, you just can't see it because the image is large enough that it fills my screen. And then we have the relative URL and then it still says no repeat top center. So this image is actually centered on the screen and there's a little bit going out beyond the edges. Now, the reason that top center I was trying to describe is so useful is that let's say I had something really important on either side, like I really wanted that this plant and these rocks remain visible regardless of the size of somebody's monitor. If I were to align things to the left, things would shift depending on the size of somebody's computer. Here's an example. The window just got a little bit smaller and you'll notice that despite the size of the window, the content area remains in the middle. It's designed to float in the middle of any sized window. So if the window gets smaller, you lose some of that left-hand image, but the distance from the side of the content area remains the same. So you're not losing this part of the image, you're just losing the outer edge. If we were to do things a little bit differently by changing to align to the, to the left, let's see, no repeat, top left. Instead, we go back to our page, now, on smaller monitors, you lose more and more of the plant each time because it doesn't move with the image. It allows this content area to move and cover things up, as well as, if you look over the rocks, as the screen gets bigger, it covers up more and more of those rocks each time. The last parameter that we need to talk about for background images is the attachment property. So we're going to go back to our style sheet. There are two attachments you should consider. There's scroll and fixed. So scroll basically means exactly what it sounds like, where the image will scroll with you as you move up and down the page. And then fixed means the image is fixed in place and it will not move. So we're going to start with scroll. Save that. Now when I refresh it and I scroll down the page, you'll notice the image moves with us until we get to the bottom and then we lose that background. And this image I got from a site called beachbackgrounds.com. Beach has a hyphen in it. Anyway, if you set the attachment to scroll, it, the image will scroll with you. If you set it to fixed, it will not scroll, which is good for a static image like this because the image is going to have a bottom. You're going to run out of background eventually. Now the background doesn't move. It stays in place while the page scrolls. And um, those are pretty much all the things to consider when you're setting up your background. And if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments.